What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Let's Play Breath of the Wild. Today, we're talking about having a single hit. Press that like button, subscribe. I'm gonna follow my Twitter <laughs> and my Instagram, my Snapchat in the description as well. And you can enter to win my free gift card giveaway. We're giving away five Amazon gift cards. Sound like a male JoJo Siwa. <laughs> like a bro version of JoJo Siwa. <laughs> we're giving away five Amazon gift cards. Hey guys, welcome back to the Sorry. tutorial, but before we start, if you guys could please get this video to 50 <laughs> likes, in the next video I'll be able to give away one free copy of Destiny 2. That could be you, you could be playing Destiny 2 right now. Simply smash like and you're automatically entered, but before that, please comment as well. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to tell you how to uh, use Audacity in the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Breath of the Wild. My name is Jay Zoomster. And I am Aiden. Bruh. Damn, bruh. We in the Oa so, Dame yeah, sure. shrine. Oa Dame. Oa Dame supports free gift card giveaways. So make sure you go ahead and like their YouTube channel too. He hit the post notification bell. G. He definitely did. God damn. Stasis is my favorite post of all the runes. I'm just Oh yeah? Say. I like Stasis, Stasis the most. Magnesis is fine. Karan is pretty epic. I love the bombs. But just being able to be like, I'm a god now. Let me just pause time. Love it. Love it. That's fair. That's fair. I definitely agree. I love them all. Probably my least favorite is bombs. Yeah. But even that's really good. But even those are useful and good. So, like, do you have post notifications turned on for any YouTube channels? Uh, I don't... You part of the notification squad? I'm not sub to that many channels. So, when I do occasionally sub because my sub list is so low i'll turn on notifications you know mm -hmm. i don't mind doing it i think it's i think it's an issue where like i'm subscribed to a lot of channels and only some of them have notifications because it means i only get their uploads and i never yeah, get to see sure. the ones that don't have the bell on so it gets really annoying and i just forget like oh i'm technically sub to you but because i don't have the bell on i haven't been notified of any of your videos in three months <laughs> so I typically, if I do sub to somebody, I'll just go ahead and put the, put the stupid bell on. What about you? Um, well, it kind of goes back to what you said about not subbing to a lot of people. Yeah. I'm really not subbed to many, but when I am subbed, like you, I, I do generally put on the bell. I think it just comes down to the fact that like. I hate the fact that you need to, to do that. Just to subscribe, to... basically. Yeah, you shouldn't. I, I don't know. I just feel like you shouldn't have to turn a bell on yeah. to get notifications of someone uploading. Because it was right? like, like, originally, you want to follow a dude's content, hit the sub button, right? If you like the video, you like it, and it's in a playlist for you to see. But then YouTube was creating problems that nobody had and was like, but what if I want to sub, but not really? And YouTube is like, we got you covered, fake hypothetical person that doesn't exist. Introducing the notification bell, which pretty much is just another sub already. But for the people that you want to sub, but don't actually want to see their content, which is like, then why are you sub to them in the first place? <laughs> Here's the notification bell just for you. And for people like me who actually want to stay subbed, it means I got to go to every fucking channel in alphabetical order and be like, do I have the bell on? Okay, I have the bell on here. <laughs> Do I have the bell on here? All right, I have the bell on here. And God forbid I sub to a new channel because when that happens, I just forget to click the bell. And so then I Yo. just don't get their content. So bass backwards. With all of this being said, make sure you guys fucking click. If you haven't hit the bell yet, are you even really <laughs> living? Come on now, everybody. If you want to be part of the Toe Sucker Nation, go ahead and slap that like button too. If you want to join the old man's free paraglider them. giveaway, please <laughs> click the bell. Um, can we get this video to three likes? <laughs> I used to do those. Uh, you remember those lower thirds I used to have? Or I'd be yeah. playing a game and then a little YouTube lower third would be like, can we get this video to 10 likes? Because I wouldn't actually <laughs> want to say it, but I just had the lower third say it for me. Oh, and that man. worked too. That's the wild and shit. That shit well, yeah, works. Yeah, you see it pop up and you're like, okay. Maybe I will leave yeah. a like. Because I forget most of the time. I don't like a whole lot of videos, you know? Oh, same. If I'm same. liking a video, I'm either doing it out of support for the homie 
or the video is a fucking masterpiece. But like every other video, the majority of videos on YouTube, I don't like or dislike. I don't leave one way or the other. I typically watch my video. I have my thoughts and I'm done with it. Um, For sure. But like that's that's really how I feel about it, too. Sometimes I do be. Oh, fuck. I didn't even hit anything. I just zoned out. You just went through the ether. You didn't even <laughs> hit the ground either. You were just like, oh, wow. Five out. Oh, it just puts you right gosh. here too. All right. What were we saying? Jay hadn't taken his medication, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I told him to before the series started. And he just thought, mm, I don't need it tonight. And clearly he does. Yeah, so. uh, apparently I was wrong. I'll be taking it for the rest of the series. So Great Plateau is so good. I enjoyed it. I'm going to miss spending, it. Spending three episodes on the Great Plateau, though, is that good? That's going to be the question that we're going to ask I ourselves. I mean, you said you speed run the whole thing in 25 minutes. And I don't know about you, but we've uh, hit the hour mark at this point still have not been the great plateau yet yeah yeah i had to grind that so hard dude it's weird how that happened you know yeah it's weird how jay the zoomster being bad at video games happened you know, who would have thought? <laughs> only on let's play though when i play the game by myself i'm actually a master at it you know? i'm a god no one's better than me so what i wanted to bring up but i wanted to wait until this part and i thought we'd get to here a little bit quicker but you know whoa. <laughs> i wanted to bring up the fact that i love that you get that you get a, a hurt container at the end of the first, at the end of the Great Plateau. Or stamina wheel. Because, yeah, well, either or. But you get something at the end of it, which makes the Great Plateau feel almost like a dungeon. Right. Especially with the puzzles that you go through, not just in the shrines, but like to get to the shrines. Mm. It really feels like you just went through your first dungeon. And I really like that. Well, it works um, in a it really... in a progression sense in that, like, you've beaten the tutorial, so now you get a reward for it. But it also, at the same time, is a mini tutorial letting you know that if you have four spirit orbs at any time, you can do this again. So it's kind yeah, of multi-purpose. Sure. This is the best tutorial in any Zelda game. I agree. And probably one of the best in video games in general. Now that's a Zack Snyder Productions video I'd actually watch. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That do be a good video though. Yeah. Unlike his other video on Breath of the Wild. More like all of his other videos. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Which his other video is not only a bad opinion, but a bad video. In general. In general. Zach was on some wild and shit at that era in time. He was like, what if I just shit on Breath of the Wild? I fucking on that video left like a, a practically a three page essay talking about every one of his points and leaving it in the comments below. And sometimes I'll just go back to that video not to watch the video, but to read my comment. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I ever do a Breath of the Wild video, I already have my script right there, just in this comment section. Well done there, young one. And it's like, like I get it, but like that's just such a wild video. And even he went back and said he was too harsh oh, yeah, absolutely. in that video and said that, that he would have done it better. But yeah, he was talking about, like, he's just really angry at the game for no reason. Yeah. And just being mean. There's a bit of a, that, about like, mean-spirited energy in there. Yeah, and it's kind of weird. Because, you know, the points he's making are... Oh, damn! Damn, bro! up time! Okay! Damn! Yo, he, be, he probably uses Old Spice. Damn, he'd be right. We talked about <laughs> earlier, like, Homeless Zack. This is Zack when he orders Postmates. He gets a, <laughs> he gets a kingly crown. And a whole suit on. <laughs> so that when the postmate guy comes, he can look professional. Yeah, for sure. You need, you need to look like, well, I couldn't go get it because this is my office and this is where I work. Right. Meanwhile, if he doesn't, he'll be like, yeah, I'm homeless. I'm, 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 <laughs> then he goes back to wearing his homeless garb. <laughs> as he usually does. <laughs> but no, that video is wild and especially like watching it now. And like some of it I agree with, uh, particularly about like weapon stuff and enemy variety stuff um yeah for sure but a lot of it is just like yeah i mean those are issues but you know the open world's still fucking fantastic and a lot of what he brings up doesn't really like affect the open world enjoyment that much for sure i think like in a, like as far as the as far as the enemy variety goes that's 100 percent a fair point he makes the couple i, I think that's Really good fair I think points. enemy variety is, and I don't want to use the word objective, but like objectively, the enemy variety is very low in this game. Mm -hmm. 
from from and that and that is a fact. There is very few enemy variety. Right. Whether that's an issue to you or not is subjective, but like objectively, there's not a lot of enemies in this game. And personally, that kind of bothers me at times. But the enemies we do have are still fun to fight. Right. And plus, you kind of balance it out with big monsters, which are really fun, like the Talus and the Lionel and the um, the Hinox. Yeah. And the Sandworm. I love those. Molduga. Yeah. Speaking of loving, I love this cutscene. Talk about lore. Zelda theory. Did you know that these guardians are ran with iOS? Now, a lot of people <laughs> didn't know this, but I did some digging, and it turns out, if you look at the back of the guardian in an unused model in a demo of the game, you'll notice a little Apple logo on there that kind of doesn't look like an Apple. Now, that got me thinking. What if... <laughs> That's all Zelda lore like, <laughs> theory videos right there. So I saw E.G. Anuma tweet out something in 2015, and that got me thinking, is Termina actually gay? I went back to play Majora's Mask, and a lot of gay undertones were in the game. <laughs> if you turn to page 520 of the Hyrule Historia, you'll find this one paragraph that says, Homo, does this mean that Majora is gay in Majora's Mask? <laughs> And the commentary on the game of, of, of the people of Termina not liking the moon in Majora, does this sort of symbolize how current society feels toward the homosexual people? Do they hate gay people? Well, that's all the time we have for today. Go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Did you hit the notification bell? Be sure to hit the notification bell, guys. Come on. Oh, Lord. I told I told Jay this, but I just spent like a day watching Zeltic or whatever, and he does like a lot of really good like Zelda lore videos, and I just kind of got like sucked into them. And they were really well produced and really well edited, but the but the more I thought of it, the more I was like, yeah, this is cool and all, but none of this like actually matters at all. <laughs> yeah, we talked about this. We were like, yeah, yeah, that's dope, but um, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> not accurate at all like it's like it's cool that you found a link between the mirror of twilight and a uh, 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 optional side quest in breath of the wild but uh but uh, that's not true it's not accurate <laughs> it's how it's actually great or whatever but that'd be well, zelda let's talk, three about, videos. let's talk about breath of the wilds timeline placement oh Ooh. no Ooh, not okay. again so i'm not talking i'm not talking about the time not again placement. so how i how i how i view it right is eventually mm -hmm. when the game came out people were kind of all over the place um obviously with it being post-apocalyptic a lot of people thought it was at mm -hmm. the end of the timeline and i was fine with that it could be at the end of any of the timelines honestly i'm okay with whatever but then news got out that it's at the end of every timeline and i'm like well wait a minute how does that shit happen how can a game be in all three timelines in a game that doesn't involve time travel at all like how is that possible but that just seems to be the, the current accepted position is that it's at the end of every I, um, timeline. I, I hate to bring up MatPat when talking about oh, this. No. But there was actually a game theory episode that has worked its way into my head canon with how it works. And the way it, and, and he used Hyrule Warriors, which is confirmed non-canon, mm -hmm. right? It's not canon. But he said Hyrule Warriors, if you look at it as canon, is the perfect jumping off point for Breath of the Wild. Because in that game shit from other timelines are purposely brought in speaking like saying that they're from other timelines and so at the end of the game he at the end of the video he basically said that breath of the wild is the result of merging those timelines in that game but like how does that so happen in hyrule warriors though there's like magic involved that does it oh okay and like they just like, like wave it away sort of thing. they're like well yeah they like wave it away with like magic doing it so like in that regard yeah, apparently, like, this is a unification timeline where everything's merged into one. Um, and, like, Shit's wild. Per per personally, I, um, I don't know. On one hand, there's some things that look really similar to places in this game, and there's some geography that lines up perfectly. You know, there's Arbiter's Grounds from Twilight Princess. There's a bunch of shit that's really dope and, and lines up and looks cool. And there's a bunch of Easter eggs and names of places. So thinking that it's set in the same universe is dope. But on the other hand, I don't know. I feel like this is a game that actually would benefit being disconnected. I think so. And being in, and being in its own timeline. It, disconnected from everything else. Because there's new lore in this game, right? Yeah. New characters, the guardians and everything like that. 
and having this be like 100 years later after like it's already been a thousand years since the guardians were found in the first place i i don't know i feel like this game's like too far down the line where they can if they want to get away with saying that this is at the end of the timeline but like i don't know I feel like it works better if you just say, hey, this is a reboot. Well, that's how I view a lot of the Zelda games is I don't view them in a timeline sense. I view them all as their own like separate legends and separate mm. stories. Obviously, with the few games that have sequels, that's easy, right? Majora's I Mask feel like comes there's... after Ocarina. Zelda 2 comes after Zelda 1. But for any of the rest of them that like aren't connected outright, uh, I just view them as their own separate thing. Because I think the only that's the ones... best way for me to do it. I agree. Paraglider! I, Yay! We're back, baby! Yay! Yes! God bless. <laughs> the only games that I connect outright... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Are, um... Ocarina of Time and Majora, of course. And then I connect Wind Waker to Ocarina and Twilight Princess to Ocarina. Because both of those games directly reference the events of Ocarina. Sure, Wind Waker and its opening and uh, Twilight Princess multiple Twilight times. With, uh, with, yeah, so like... Those games are easily direct sequels. Those work, right? right? There's no problem comparing those. But then you start saying, well, well, technically, A Link to the Past is in the Downfall timeline. Where there's like, at that point, I'm like, is it? Or is it just <laughs> is it a going? Zelda game made in the 90s, right? Like, trying to yeah. work off the past two Zelda games, right? Like, I, I, I applaud people who try to, like, really get, dig into the connections and build the timeline. It's a lot of work, from what I gather. Um... And Nintendo's even, like, tried to add a little bit to it. But it's very clear that, like, from the beginning, there was no such thing as this timeline thing. And it was really a concept invented by fans. And that Nintendo just kind of had to be like, uh, you guys want an answer? Let's just see what we can cook up in 30 minutes. And, and that's what we got the, the timelines from. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And again, there's ones that were, honestly, in my opinion... If I want a unified canon timeline, right, that I can follow, that I'm like, this is the Zelda timeline, I'm considering the first, like, five or so. So Skyward Sword to Ocarina, which I think is Skyward Sword, Minish Cap, Four Swords, and then Ocarina of Time. See, Four I Swords, I could just consider spinoffs all together. Like, I don't even oh, for sure. the same thing. But, um, they, I think that's considered one of them. Yeah, they're in but, the wh Whatever. Lines. Whatever it is, I consider that the first, like, opening canon. And then, honestly, fuck all the split timeline noise. Follow the child timeline, and it actually works. Yeah. Follow Majora after that, and then Twilight Princess a hundred or so years after that. And there you go. If you want a straight shot of Zelda games in one thing that follows each chron chronologically, there you go. I... The problem for me is when you, like, come in with, like, Oh, here's the adult timeline, which doesn't make sense and shouldn't exist. Right, and then the <laughs> downfall one, even dumber than that. Yeah, it's like, like okay, it's kind of cool that the idea that there's a world where Link got sent, like, you know, at the end of the Ocarina where he gets sent back in time, it's cool that that future continues without him. But here's here's an argument for that. Link would still exist in that timeline. Just because he got sent back to the past by Zelda doesn't mean that link essentially like never existed now he would still grow up eventually and probably become a hero yeah so the fact that the hero of time wasn't there or whatever is just bizarre to me well that's the thing about this whole timeline um, shenanigan in the first place is like there's always multiple links in every game and there's always multiple mm -hmm. zeldas in every game and they're always set a hundred or two thousand years in between them and it's like sure if, you, if we have that many cop-outs, then, like, let's just say <laughs> that this is the same Hyrule that got, like, a landscape from Aliens, and that's why it looks this way. Like, <laughs> there's so very clearly so many, like, gotcha moments in the timeline that Nintendo just explains away by going, uh, well, this is actually from a different future when Link, like, died in one game, even though you don't actually... You can play Ocarina without dying, Nintendo, right? Like, this is, this is possible. I don't, I don't get where a whole thing Yeah, that was, that was the thing right there where it was from. like... Because you can play Ocarina without dying once. Yeah. It's possible. So then, essentially, now that entire timeline just doesn't exist. Yeah. But yeah, so if I'm looking at Zelda as a timeline, then I'm looking at the child timeline because it actually works. And honestly, after that too, right? If you want to look at the, the, the adult timeline, that's a straight shot too. Mm -hmm. Right? If you just ignore Majora... 
and just say, oh, well, Link didn't save Hyrule again, and now there's a new Link and it flooded. That works too. But it's the whole, like, multiple split timelines that just doesn't work for me. And trying to canonicize all of them, saying they all are equally canon, just doesn't work for me. I, I think what I dislike a lot... Oh, shit. Okay, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I, I think the thing I, I dislike about the whole timeline notion in general is it promotes this idea that somehow all these games are telling one singular story and that they're all connected. Mm. Which is, like, false none of them are really connected only in like name and location and characters only uh it kind of promotes this like wrong idea that every zelda game is part of an overarching story like fucking percy jackson and that they're all chapters <laughs> of the same lore and that if you want to play zelda you have to play it in this order or you're not going to understand it here's the thing about zelda mm. you could play any game you want and and do it in any order and timeline or no timeline it's all going to make sense but people want to act like, oh, with the Zelda timeline, that it's suddenly bigger and more bombastic than it actually is. Like, it's a game series where you go around as a little green boy and collect shit. Like, that's all you do. Why there was this notion of, like, well, are they all secretly, like, part of an overarching plot? It's like, no. <laughs> Nintendo makes these games at a time and they do what they think looks cool. And so that's why we go to the Twilight Realm in one game and the Dark Realm in another and the whole world flooded in another one. Not because they were thinking about the story purposes of this. Because they thought mechanically it might be kind of cool. So I don't know. I think it kind of gives people the I, wrong idea about how Zelda is structured in the first place. You know? I agree. And I think Nintendo kind of wrote themselves into a hole with the timeline because they could have just ignored it. Absolutely. They didn't have to. But instead of ignoring it, no. They didn't, ju they didn't just say, oh yeah, there's a timeline. They release a game set at the very beginning... And not only that, but somehow make it so that every Ganondorf is a descendant of Demise and they're cursed to reincarnate. And not only that, they 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 release a timeline in a book. Yeah. <laughs> if Nintendo cool themselves that you can buy that profits Nintendo, in which they take with, a timeline with a timeline that was created by fans and said, yeah, it's canon now. <laughs> and like, if they had just done that, right? And if and if skyward sword was still the start that'd be fine my problem with skyward sword and trust me i love that game for all of its problems it's still a really fun game and the story's great my problem is they just at the end of the game the whole notion of oh yeah every ganondorf after this and every link after this is a reincarnation they're doomed they're doomed to repeat the same story over and over like way to ruin the ending of every zelda game mm -hmm. <laughs> Way to make it so they never actually win. And write yourself into a hole be... for every future game coming after it. That has and to have Link and Zelda right after... and Ganon. And the worst part is right after that, what do they do? Oh, they release the next 3D mainline game completely disregarding the canon they just wrote themselves into. Yeah. Probably because they realized, oh fuck, we messed up. And we shouldn't have done that. And I I don't know. It, it wouldn't be so annoying to me if Breath of the Wild didn't directly contradict everything they set up with Skyward Sword and the Hyrule Historia. Um, I think that, so I guess that just, I think that just goes to show like none of these games really had the intention of connecting. It was very much like a, yeah, a fan idea. And for a fun fan project, absolutely go right ahead. There are people arguing about the Mario timeline, you know, <laughs> and I yeah. get it, but like, does the Mario timeline make those games better? Does the Zelda timeline make those games better? Does it somehow further your enjoyment of this series? You know? And if it does exist, mm. and if it is real, you know, is there a certain way to play Zelda? Is there an order to it? Is it like watching the MCU? It's like, no, it's not. It's just kind of like a thing that you have to, like, regard because Nintendo made a public book about it. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I agree. And, like, I don't know, because on one hand, as a fan of Zelda, it's dope to think they're all in one, like, single timeline um and i at the other hand i i see a lot of people who are like well nintendo this isn't nintendo's fault this is the fans fault for creating a timeline when no nintendo's the one who start who made a game that literally like i said ends with reincarnation being the cause for every other zelda game mm -hmm. they did this to themselves they didn't have to feed into the fans and feed into the whole timeline but they did and now they have to deal with the repercussions of releasing a game that directly contradicts it when they've made their timeline canon. That's the way I view it, right? Like, they did this to themselves. They need to figure out some way to make it fit into what they've started. Right. 
and I go in and like if if they hadn't done that I'd be more lenient on Breath of the Wild and their handling of where it is in the Zelda timeline but as of right now it just feels kind of lazy to disregard something they set up yeah I just choose not to follow it <laughs> yeah yeah for that's sure that's me you know I don't I don't put much stock into it again again I it's cool that Ocarina directly reference or that Twilight directly references Ocarina in multiple parts. That's dope. And it's dope that Wind Waker does the same and they feel like sequels. <clears throat> but you're not going to get me saying, oh, yeah, Spirit Tracks is in the same universe as Ocarina. <laughs> or Four Swords, right? Like, mm. very clearly, like, fucking, we're Triforce heroes fit in the timeline. You know, like, who yeah. who cares? You know, it's for fun. And, like, These games I are supposed know, to like, be fun. On one hand, the whole, like, reincarnation shit, sure, it works, I guess. It makes sense why there's so many. But, like, at the same time, what I liked about... It's called The Legend of Zelda because they're all different legends. Hell, if you follow, like, what a legend is, technically, all of these could have been variations of the same story. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, they're n not all of these are connected. They don't all have to. And I think that's far more interesting from a narrative perspective. Yeah, if, if, if you think... If you, like, look at this as an audience member... And think about, oh, what if these are all the same story and it's just been, you know, morphed over time? You're, you're reading about the same story, but it's completely different because it's just changed. Like, that's more interesting than, oh, well, Demise cursed Link and Zelda, so now they have to reincarnate every time they die. Like, wow. Okay. I wish I cared. Damn, bro. Damn. <laughs> Anyway, that being said, quite the tangent we had there. We just got the paraglider yeah. <laughs> on a tower. We're free to do whatever the fuck we want now. And we spent 10 minutes complaining about Zelda narrative and timeline shit. I, I find it funny how I wasn't even trying to get into a time. I specifically said, no, we're not going to talk about. Yeah. That. About yeah, that was my fault. But I wanted to bring it up at least. And now we, now we never have to. Now we're free. Now we can just go on and talk about it. Never talk about the timeline again. Because we did we do we did those tangents in Sonic, right? All the time. Yeah. But once we got them yeah. out of the way, you know, more more humor. Like that's, ha -ha funny jokes. That's, you know? that's, that's kind of, I don't know. That's the problem with us. We kind of always been like hardwired in this podcast yeah. way of talking. Especially with and this it's fucking probably game. because, yeah. And this is going to be a game where that's just the type of commentary where you're going to get from it. Yeah. And if you don't like that, well then, fuck, I apologize. Fuck you. fuck you. Fuck you, bro. So yeah, this is our first tower. This one's relatively calm compared to the others. Uh, and this isn't necessarily your first tower. You can do, uh, you can do any of them. <laughs> but this is where the game wants you to go. And for the sake of Let's Playing, I'm going to go where the game wants me to go. <laughs> so we're going to uh, to this village. Village time? But I was going to say... My wife! <laughs> <laughs> stepping away from the timeline talk and more as Zelda as a franchise... With the news of Breath of the Wild 2 and the sequel to this game... Electric Boogaloo. I, I honestly think I'd be okay if Zelda kind of skipped the whole, like, different legend every time thing and, and just for once released, like, a series of games set in the same continuity. Right. I think that'd be very interesting for the series. I don't think we're if, getting anything like that after Breath of the Wild 2. But mm -hmm. it would be really cool if they actually stuck with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, I happy think Breath of the Wild is getting a two in the first place. Let me just yeah, from a narrative. I angle, I definitely think that like I think Breath of the Wild two is gonna be as far as they go mm -hmm. with the idea. But I think it would be really cool if we got like f I don't know three to four games send the same continuity. Yeah, it'd be pretty dope. That being said, they always could if they want to, right? If they want to go beyond. Breath of the Wild 2, they could. I'm just not really expecting them to. You're right. And it's like, in general, a lot of the stories in these games, why they can have certain moments to them, absolutely. Like, Sonic the Hedgehog has moments. But you wouldn't mm -hmm. say that Sonic the Hedgehog has good plots. And I think in a very similar sense, I don't think any Zelda has a good plot. It has moments. Yeah. It has characters. It has a world you can believe in. And a ton of lore. But are any of these individual stories, like, really good on their own? Could they really be a film, right? Like, could they be in written form and still hold up as well? No, the because only, it's trying uh, to be a fucking fun video game, right? And I think, like, that's where it should be for a lot of the time. So, like, 
I think you know. I don't know. I think that yeah, I, I agree. And I think the only time Zelda ever goes beyond, yeah, this is a decent story with some interesting moments is Skyward Sword, and that's to that game's detriment, honestly. Right. All these setups because and stories are, is... are just excuses so that we can fucking, you know, go on a boat. <laughs> you know, why why and why Hyrule flooded? Fight well, you see, long after Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nintendo yeah. was just like, but what and... if water? But what if yeah, and it's the same thing with like with Skyward with it. It's the same thing with Twilight Princess. It's like, what if Link turn into wolf? <laughs> Why does he turn into wolf? Because cool. Well, you uh, see, in the Twilight into, realm, because, the physical. Because form. you see, Link is Link is a chosen hero. So in the Twilight form, while everyone else turns into spirits, he becomes a wolf because he's the chosen hero of courage, and he uh. He does this thing, and yeah, and I'd, but but then like I love like in Nintendo. I love Nintendo was just wolf cool for me to be that job where I'm the guy who's not like a main writer or not like working with the team, but I'm the guy who's like, all right, so we need a reason for Link to be a wolf, and <laughs> you, you have to come up with a reason that's good enough because that's just like fucking. All right, let me take out my Mad Libs and see what I can cook up today <laughs> as to why yeah. of this plot's happening. That must be such a fun job. <laughs> yeah, and again, the only game that doesn't do that and, and is is Skyward Sword. And again, that's to that game's detriment because that game has an explanation for everything. Well, you to the see. point where it's like, where it's like, so this is the first time the Master Sword's created. You literally create the Master Sword in that game, and while that's dope on paper, it's also like. Boring. Okay, did I really need to do th it's boring, yeah, and it's like did I really need to? Alright, I'm gonna try and get a horsey before we end off tonight's episode. Okay, King. I'm gonna try and get a horsey. I, I tend to have um, historically bad luck with trying to get wild horses, so I'm interested to see how you fare. On one hand, it's really cool that you have to go catch horses and that they're kind of expendable in this game and you can have as many as you want, but on the other hand, I really, really miss... Oh, get them! Get them! Like, get them! Like, like, Fucking oh, fuck. See the other horse is gonna spook him before you get there though. Oh no, you got it. Alright, stupid ass with the octo balloons. Alright, see see if this baby likes you. Jesus. This the length of the episode depends on how long it takes me to get a horse. I like that. There's a challenge in every episode. Motherfucker. This fucker don't even see it coming. Oh my god. <laughs> That's really hype. Keep it up, Netflix. Oh, there we go. Okay. You got one. Hell yeah. Epic. Now ride your Pony Express ass to town so we can end the episode. <laughs> or the shrine. You can stop by the shrine if you want to do that. That'd be quicker. I'm stopping by the stable. It's right there. He, he doesn't really care. So, this is my favorite. Uh, oh god. This is unfortunate. All right, well, give me a second, Aiden. I'm gonna yeah. Have to... I didn't expect it to just do that. I mean, my headphones just turned off. Uh oh. Stinky. So unfortunately, after plugging my headphones back in and setting them up to charge, uh, Aiden was no longer being recorded on my capture card, so I have to talk about this rest after the fact, and basically I went to go dock a horse, but it turns out that you actually need 20 rupees to do that, and as you can see, we had zero rupees, so I was a little out of luck, but then, luckily, we found Beetle over there, and Beetle let me sell him some stuff, and we were able to get, like, I think it was, like, 400 rupees, and you can see on the screen that we're getting 400 rupees, and it's pretty, actually, kind of epic that we're doing that, and then we rode back here, and we talked to the homie, but I had to get my horse under control, and it's kind of annoying, and you, you, you know how the game be, so once we get here, I register my horse, and they go ahead, and I get it, and then, uh, Aiden said that we needed to name the horse Orbeez, so we named it Orbeez, and the horse is Orbeez now, and that's our horse for the rest of the game, and thank you all for watching, in the next episode, we're gonna do, uh, the two shrines that I highlight in, in super fast motion. I, I try to buy in some sell some meat right there, but I decided not to do it. So we're going to go to uh, that shrine and the other shrine, and I'll see you all in the next episode.